Hi, it's Brian Gregg back again from Research and Web Design. Uh, just compiling the fourth in my series of open cart screencasts. Um, today we will be focusing on creating a responsive menu in uh, open cart. So, uh, for those of you not familiar with responsive design, um, it's really uh, the idea of um, creating a um, experience that's um, uh, more suited to the particular uh, screen width that you are presenting your content on. Uh, so in this case, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, presenting a different navigation menu in our OpenCart uh, site that uh, will give a little bit of a different look and feel uh, if you are on a mobile platform. So. Uh, let's get right into it. I'm going to start uh, by downloading a nice little JavaScript uh, library called SlickNav. It's pretty bare bones, but it gets the job done. I've used this for a lot of my um, WordPress installations and um, it's, uh, I think, well suited for open cart, at least for the, uh, the example that we're going to be stepping through today. So let's go ahead and download that. And um, we are going to grab two very important files out of here. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to download this, uh, the copy over this uh, minified version of the JavaScript file. And uh, bring that right over into our OC Pro. And uh, if you don't remember, uh, or if you're not familiar with the directory structures of OpenCart, uh, go back and watch some of my earlier videos. Um, but if you've already seen those and you're familiar with the OpenCart installation, you'll know that um, uh, all of the files that we're going to be modifying are in the catalog folder. We're going to go into View. JavaScript and let's drop this along here. Uh, this is also where you get your jQuery files and your jQuery UI files, uh, etc. We are also going to want to grab one other important file out of here, and that is the slicknet.css. So let's bring that over into our OpenCart directory as well. Uh, we are going to put that in our theme directory right here in OC Pro with our other style sheets. So, great. We've got our CSS and our JavaScript and uh, that pretty much contains all of the code that we're going to need to add in our responsive menu. If you remember our old site, uh, right now it just uses a you know uh, fixed width so we can go and uh, resize this page all day and nothing's going to change uh, but we obviously want that uh, menu to once we get down to these smaller width sizes we want it to go from this fixed width menu to a, one of those hamburger menus uh, that you see in so many mobile sites so how are we going to do that well, very simple. We're going to go in and uh, in our template common, we're going to go into our header.tpl and uh, we're going to add in our style sheet that we just created. So uh, let's copy the um, code that we already have to include uh, one of our other style sheets and we'll just modify it uh, to pull the one for SlickNav, which is called SlickNav.css. We are then going to want to uh, pull in that JavaScript as well, so let's copy over the script that's already included for jQuery. And again, we're going to modify this. Remember, we put that in the root directory, and we're going to include the jQuery dot slicknav dot min dot js. All right, wonderful. Let's go over to our 
site and we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that it's able to locate those so let's go into our error console ah, we got some errors here let's clear these out refresh are we getting any errors here no we're in good shape okay so now that we have our uh, files included um, if you go through the documentation for the slick nav uh, you'll know that the way to create a uh, navigation is to assign the uh, unordered list the ID of menu we don't need to do anything with our list items and that's going to take care of everything we need for the um, header.tpl. Uh, we are going to need to add some code into the footer as well. Um, so right now, you'll notice we don't have a footer.tpl. Um, that's easily rectified by going into the default directory, templates, common, and lo and behold, our footer.tpl. So if you remember, um, by copying those out and putting it into our theme directory, uh, this TPL file is going to take precedence over the one in the default directory. So that's exactly what we want. So right here before the body, uh, we are going to add in some code here. Query. and um, OpenCart does not like the dollar sign syntax so you actually have to write out jQuery um, I think there's a way that you can overwrite that but um, it uh, by default it's going to want you to use the explicit uh, uh, jQuery when you're creating a function otherwise it's going to give you some uh, some errors that are not so fun to try to troubleshoot okay And you can find the documentation on how to set this up on the SlickNav website. But I've gone ahead and set up a real basic navigation that should suit us just fine. All right, we're going to close out our parentheses, terminate the code. And we're going to go ahead and save that. Okay. And let's go back over here and just make sure that everything is working. All right. It looks like it changed the styles a little bit um, when we um, gave it that ID, which is okay. And, huh. All right. looks like we still have a fixed width here. Not what we were hoping for. In fact, oh, look, there's our hamburger menu up there. What's going on here? We got two navigation menus. Obviously, not what we want. Um, that's okay because what we've uh, yet to do is go into our style sheet here. So let's jump back up into our style sheet directory and go into our main.css. And um, I had some media queries in here. So we haven't touched media queries yet because we haven't done any. Um, uh, any responsive design at this point, uh, but uh, at this point I think we're going to have to. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to hide that uh, hamburger menu. So slip nav menu. Boy, display. None. All right. And if all goes well, our hamburger menu went away. All right. But still, we don't see it when we reduce the screen width. 
Let's get this console out of here. So what are we going to do? Let's uh, set up a media query. At media, screen, and max width 40 M's. Let's make our menu invisible display none and let's bring our hamburger menu back display block so what this is going to do is uh, when we reduce the screen width to below 40 M's, it's going to hide our menu and it's going to display our uh, hamburger menu. Delicious. So let's go ahead and save that down and let's refresh our page and let's see what happens. Ta-da! Look at that. We now have a nice responsive navigation on our site. Exactly what we wanted. Um, definitely, if you are unfamiliar with responsive design, uh, it's something that's worth looking into. Um, if you um, want to know a little bit more about it, uh, there's a wide breadth of um, tutorials out there on how to do it, books that you can read. Uh, there are some people who know much more about it than I do who can explain it um, in far more detail. But I do plan on uh, issuing another uh, screencast uh, following this one up, which is going to go into a little bit more detail about making the entire site responsive. But um, definitely a good start to make sure that you have a navigation menu that is responsive. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, again, this is Brian Gregg from Resurgence Web Design uh, signing off.